Coming up on Ask the Tech Guy, the answer to the universal question, why does my Wi-Fi suck so bad? Ask the Tech Guy comes to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? LastPass can ensure they are by making access and authentication seamless. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. This episode of Ask the Tech Guy is brought to you by LastPass. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. Hello, everybody. It's Leo Laporte. Time to answer another question from Ask the Tech Guy. I'm your tech guy. Will writes, I remember back in the day I had a single Wi-Fi router. And I was happy. It covered my whole house. Nowadays, I have the Wi-Fi router and two more extenders just to attempt to cover my house. With all of this, I still have Wi-Fi problems. I'm fairly certain, Will says, all of this is caused by the proliferation of Wi-Fi devices everywhere. TVs, Google Home, Alexa, tablets, phones, smart thermostats, security cameras, garage door openers, light bulbs, etc. The list goes on and on. Maybe you could cover the basics of Wi-Fi and what I can do to improve coverage. You're absolutely right, Will. This is a universal question. Uh, partly because, and you nailed it, we ask more of Wi-Fi now than we ever have before. The IoT devices, multiple phones, multiple computers. You might have a dozen or more devices sharing that Wi-Fi access. Uh, I checked myself on my home uh, Wi-Fi network, and I have two networks, one at Euro and one Orbi. I have more than 50 devices. Of course, I'm an outlier, but still, people have a lot of Wi-Fi devices now. Then, of course, your neighbor has lots of them too, right? In fact, if you you know, look at your Wi-Fi menu, you may be seeing a dozen different access points. Some neighbors are uh, are choosing Wi-Fi routers that say, we're super powerful, double, quadruple, MIMO, and they're interfering more with you than they used to. It all adds up to terrible Wi-Fi. Uh, and and it, it does underscore one particular problem that all Wi-Fi has. It's Wi-Fi is polite. If your access point, here's another access point, uh -huh, or another device uh -huh, on the network, it'll shut up. It'll clam up. It'll wait a random amount of time, then start again. And if it hears your neighbor's Wi-Fi uh -huh, on the same channel and the same frequency, it'll shut up again. That's why Wi-Fi is so inconsistent. You might even notice pausing. It's, it's terrible for uh, streaming video and, and voice calls. Most streaming video is buffering, so it's not as noticeable. But I have to say, when we do our shows with Skype... We tell all of our contributors, and whatever you do, you can't be on Wi-Fi. You have to get a wired network, and that's it, that's for that reason. Uh, when it comes to improving your signal, I'm going to refer you a great article from Ars Technica. Jim Salter, who is really a guru of networking, wrote it. It's called The Ars Technica Semi-Scientific Guy Guide to Wi-Fi Access Points. And he recommends them a number of things. I'm not going to go through everything in the article. I would strongly recommend you read it because it's got some great tips for improving Wi-Fi. Tip number one, get a signal meter on your laptop or on your phone. If you have an iPhone, unfortunately, the way Apple works, they don't let third-party apps uh, access the signal strength coming in from the Wi-Fi radio. So iPhones are no good for this. But there are uh, soft, there's programs you could run like NetSpot on your Android device. If you have a laptop, Insider with two S's is really good from metageek.com. So once you get these on a portable device of some kind, laptop is fine, you're going to want to make a map of your Wi-Fi signals. Uh, in fact, there's a there's a Wi-Fi mapping app that I use on Android all the time. Let me let me just quickly check my Android phone because off the top of my head, I it's really handy for getting a sense, making an actual like colored map of all the, all the Wi-Fi. It's called Wi-Fi Heat Map. And so if you have an Android phone, this is a great tool. You walk around your whole house. You'll then have a map with different colors of Wi-Fi. Jim says uh, signal strength, don't get obsessed about signal strength. I anything better than 67, minus 67 dB is, is, is fine. In fact, you can actually have a, if it's too strong, 
if that negative number is too low, like minus 10, it can actually overpower your system and make Wi-Fi worse. So minus 67 is normal. Um, it, because that's a negative number, remember, anything lower, minus 66, 65, that's better. Anything higher, 68, 69 is worse. 67 is, Jim says, the cutoff point. You can also, in one of these Wi-Fi tools like Insider, see which bands are most congested. There are 11 bands in the U.S. on any given frequency. Really, there's only three because you have the middle band and the surrounding bands uh, that each channel uses up. And there's, of course, th three different frequencies. There's a 2.4 gigahertz frequency and there's two 5 gigahertz frequencies that Wi-Fi access points can use. It's great once you get a map of everything, you'll have a much better understanding of where the trouble spots are in your house but also of which frequencies and channels your devices are using. Most of your devices can be allowed to pick the channel. It's, it's really, I think, an exercise in a futility to try to assign channels. The devices will do, uh, I, and the router will do as, as good a job as you would, maybe better, and they may be moving those around from time to time. The thing to keep in mind is Wi-Fi, and this is a great analogy. I think Jim might have come up with this. Somebody did. Wi-Fi is like a lamp in a room. Uh, you, you get a pool of light from a lamp in a room, but as you go outside the room, that pool of light is weaker. Go through two doors, it's not going to make any difference at all. Wi-Fi is similar to that. A single wall will slow Wi-Fi down. By the time you've got two walls between you and the access point, you've got very little signal coming through. The farther away you get, the slower the service will be to the point where you just don't get any Wi-Fi at all. There's also other obstacles. And the worst obstacle in Wi-Fi is humans. Those big bags of water that are walking around. If Wi-Fi has to go through a human, it's going to attenuate the signal something awful. And you can verify that with your signal meter standing in front of your Wi-Fi access point. Turn your back to it and move the signal meter back and forth. You'll see you really attenuate the signal. That's one reason you want to put your routers, your access points, and your extenders high up. Have them aiming down over the heads of humans, not firing through humans. That seems weird, but in fact, that does make a difference. Higher up is better for an access point. Now, he said he's using signal extenders. Those are the old school way of expanding Wi-Fi. You'd have an access point, and then you'd buy, you know, Linksys access point from Linksys, some signal extenders. The problem with them is they literally cut your Wi-Fi speed in half. And that's because... Half the time they're talking back to the main access point, half the time they're talking to your device. That means they can only transmit to your device about half the time, half the speed. That's why we've mostly gone to mesh systems. Mesh systems generally will have a separate back channel for communicating to the main access point. That doesn't impede the speed of the Wi-Fi access. So you get a very much better performance as you're getting farther and farther away from the main unit using those Wi-Fi satellites if you have a mesh system. At home, I have an Eero. I really like Eero. I have Orbi. Orbi's probably the fastest, but not as sophisticated as the Eero. I know mesh systems are more expensive, but using a mesh system will give you a much better result, in my opinion, uh, than using uh, signal extenders. There's the advantage also that you can add uh, satellites to almost all mesh systems at a lower cost you buy an extra satellite so you can extend it as needed and generally uh, as long as you position the satellites within good range of the main unit you're going to be able to boost your wi-fi uh, farther and farther out so that works pretty well um, the, if it, there are a lot more tips that jim has about Wi-Fi. I would recommend reading that article in Ars Technica for all of the ins and outs. I don't want to spend a lot of time here. I will give you one more um, a point that might help a lot. Uh, sometimes Wi-Fi just isn't going to make it from this end of the house to that end of the house, uh, in which case you might use a wired solution to expand your Wi-Fi. What? Wired to expand my Wi-Fi? Well, you already have wires in the walls of your house. You have your electrical grid. You also have, probably from your cable television system, you have coaxial cable in the walls. Both of those can be used to extend Wi-Fi. I recommend, and I've used the TP-Link uh, home line uh, networking or power line networking devices 
devices. They're fairly inexpensive. The way it works is you'll have your Wi-Fi access point, your main router here in, uh, let's say, the living room. By the way, that's one other point Jim mentions is put that as central as possible, obviously, to shorten the distances uh, to the radius instead of the full length of the house. But you've got your centralized Wi-Fi access point. You get one of the little power line adapters, plug it in via Ethernet, then plug it into the wall... And as long as you don't have a junction box in between that plug in the wall and another point in the house, you can plug a receiver into the other end. Now these are connected via physical wires, your electrical wires, and it has either a Wi-Fi access point on it, TP-Link makes those, or another Ethernet jack that you could put into one of the satellites. That's one of the nice things about the old Eero system is you could actually put an Ethernet into the satellites to expand your Wi-Fi. It still counts as one system, but uh, it's helped out by the wire in the wall. So that's, uh, that's uh, TP-Link. Others make these power line networking. Uh, they're fairly inexpensive, and that's a really good way to expand your network using wiring in the house. Uh, I mentioned cable. The coaxial cable can also be used with a system called Mocha, but uh, you'll need to have a little bit more expensive Mocha adapters. Same idea, though, one on each end that's connected via Ethernet to an access point. So before the, all of this, is talks, I'm talking about spending money. Before you spend a lot of money on new gear, it's well worth doing an assay of the house and try moving things around a little bit. A couple of things to keep in mind. 2.4 gigahertz is a more crowded band. That's the original Wi-Fi band, but it's the one that goes the farthest. If you're trying to get something outdoors like a doorbell, 2.4 gigahertz is almost always the best choice. 5 gigahertz may work better. It doesn't go through walls as well, but for that reason, there's less interference from neighbors and other Wi-Fi going on in the house. So Generally, if you're nearby 5 gigahertz, uh, an access point or a satellite, 5 gigahertz is preferable. It's when you're far away that you want to go to 2.4 gigahertz. New gear will always improve uh, your connectivity. There is now a new standard Wi-Fi uh, 6, that's 802.11ax, that has some other features to help solve this problem. Uh, eventually, you're going to get more and more Wi-Fi 6 devices that will be able to take advantage of a Wi-Fi 6 router. So maybe the next time you buy a router, you might want to look at Wi-Fi 6. There's a lot there. It's a difficult challenge. And as any radio engineer will tell you, RF is kind of voodoo science. It's very difficult to figure out where things should be placed. But it, you can off, often improve your signal just by a slight repositioning of the satellites, the access points, and, uh, and of course, your devices. Mm -hmm. Good luck, Will. You're facing a problem all of us face, but it is possible to improve your Wi-Fi. And it's well, well worth it. Thanks for the question. Our show today brought to you by LastPass. It's from access to authentication to passwords. LastPass manages every entry point into your business so you can mitigate risk while improving employee productivity. LastPass goes above and beyond to ensure security for all of its users. And I particularly like it that your data is encrypted and decrypted only at device level. Increased security does not have to be more complex or less convenient for your business. Use LastPass. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to find out how they can help you. LastPass.com slash twit. That does it for Ask the Tech Guy for today. If you've got a question for me, I'd love to hear from you or a comment or suggestion. Ask the Tech Guy at twit.com. TV. Ask the tech guy at twit.tv. I'm Leo Laporte, your tech guy. I'll see you next week. Stumped on a nasty tech conundrum? Email ask the tech guy at twit.tv.